This is question number 23 on the November 2014 non-calculator paper. So in this question, it starts off by saying Paul has eight cards. There's a number on each card, and here are the cards, all eight of them, and the numbers on the card. Paul takes at random three cards. He adds together the three numbers on each of the cards to get a total T. Work out the probability that the that T, this total, is an odd number. Okay, this question is about combinations of cards, right? And it's also about probability. Now, when he picks a card, he's not going to replace it, and he needs to get combinations of cards that add up to odd numbers. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is look at all the possible combinations of cards he can get and consider the totals that he can get from them. So I'm going to start off and try to work through them in a systematic way. So if he picks a 2 first, right, then the other possibility he could pick is a 3 or a 3. Okay, so that total would add up to 8, which is even, so it's not what one, one of those that we want. If he picks a 2 first and a 3 second, he could pick a 4 third. And if we add up that, that adds up to 9, and that's one that we are interested in. Okay, so that's one of those that I'm interested in. If he picks a 2 first and a 3 second, he could pick a 5 third, and that gives me 10, which is even. I'm not interested in that. Okay, so I've gone through all the combinations with 2 and 3 first. If he picks a 2 first and a 4 second, right? He could then pick a 5 as his third card, and that does add up to 11, which is an odd number. Now, if he still a 2 first, there's only one 4, so I'm going to go with a 5 second and a 5 third. That adds up to 12, which is even. I'm not interested in that particular one. All right, so I've gone through two first with all the others. I'm going to start off with if he picks a three first. If he picks a three first, he could, because there are two threes, also pick a three second. And if he picks a three second, could have a four, uh, the third card as being a four. So that adds up to ten, which is even. I'm not interested in that. If he does a three first and a three second, he could get a 5 as his third card, and that adds up to 11, which is odd, and I'm interested in that particular one. Okay. What if he picks a 3 first and then a 4? Okay, if he picks a 3 and then a 4, it'll have to be a 5 third. That adds up to 7 and 5 is 12, even. I'm not interested in that. Because there's only one 4, I'm going to now look at 3 and then picking a 5 second and he could pick a 5 third which is going to add up to 13. That's odd and that's one of them that I'm interested in. He could also pick a 4 first. If he picks a 4 first, he'll have to get a 5 second and a 5 third because there's only one 4. That adds up to 14. That's even. I'm not interested in that. And so the last possible combination you can get is all fives, five first, five second, and five third. And that does add up to 15, which is odd. So there are five combinations that could give me an odd number. Now I need to look at the probabilities of working out each of those and the number of ways he can get each of those. So the first one, a two first, a three second, and a four third. Well, if you try to think about a tree diagram that could generate this, there's three ways which you could have a two, two ways which you could have a three, and then one of them would be a four. So there's six different combinations of picking two, three, and four. Two, four, and five. Well, there's one, two, there's one, four, and four fives, right? But in terms of the order in which you could pick it, you could have a three ways. You could have a two, 
two ways. You could have a four and then a path of five. There's six combinations you can have of that as well. With a three, three and a five, because they're two threes, right? You can have the three in two ways. So you could have that three, sorry, three and three in just one path, and then a five so in three different ways. So you can have three different combinations of getting that. A three, five, and five, that's a similar thing, right? The five and five would have to be consecutive ones, and there's three different positions the three could be in. So there are three ways of getting that, and there's only one way in which he could get the five five and five so that's just one combination of that now this last this bit here is tricky but you have to think about it you have to imagine a tree diagram can't draw a tree diagram for this because there's so many combinations and it will get quite messy now i'm going to look at the probabilities of picking a two three and four so the probability of picking a two there's only one of them and they're eight cards all together the probability of picking a three there are two of them but once you've picked the a two the first card there'll be seven left behind so that's going to be two out of seven and then finally the probability of picking a four there's only one four and there'll only be six cards left behind so it'll be one out of six and the rest of them are going to follow a similar pattern right the first card would be out of eight the second card would be out of seven and the third card would be out of six for the same reason because we're not replacing them i'm going to look at the probabilities the probability of picking a two is there's only one of them the probability of picking a four there's only one of them so that's going to be one seventh the probability of picking a five however there are four of them so that's going to be four out of six now i'm going to look at the probability of picking three three and five the denominators are going to follow a similar pattern And the probability of picking a three the first time, there's going to be two threes. But if I've picked a three the first time, there'll be only one left behind. And then the probability of picking a five, there are four of them. So that's four over six. Now I'm going to look at three, five, and five. The probability of picking a three is two over eight. The probability of picking a five is going to be four over seven. And then the probability of picking the next five is going to be three over six and in this last one the probability of picking my first five is going to be four out of eight the second five is going to be three out of seven and the third five is going to be two out of six so it is likely to get a bit messy as we work through this but you just need to take your time with the number work and make sure you don't mess up we're going to work out each of these as a fraction and then add up our five answers, and that will give us a probability that t is an odd number. So first of all, I'm going to just work out the denominators. 8 times 7 times 6. 8 times 7 is 56, so that's 56. And I'm going to times it by 6 to work out my denominator. 6 times 6 is 36, carry 3. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 is 30. 3. 6 times 6 is 36, carry 3. 6 times 5 is 30, plus the 3 is 33. So my denominator here is going to be 3, 3, 6, and it's going to be the same in the others. Okay, now I'm just going to multiply up the numerators and put them in there. So I'm going to do 6 times 1 times 2 times 1. 6 times 1 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 1 is still 12. 6 times 1 times 1 is 6, times 4 is 24. 3 times 2 is 6, times 1 is 6, times 4 is 24. 3 to 6, 6 times 4 is 24, and 3 lots of 24, I know that, that's 72. And then finally, 1 times 4 is 4, 4 3 is 12, 12 2 is 24. So I'm going to add these 
one, two, three, four, five fractions. I'm going to add them together to get my overall result. Okay, I'm going to move it for forward a bit so I could actually see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to do 12 over 336 plus 24 over 336 plus 24 over 336 plus 72 over 336 plus 24 over 336. Okay, adding those. Now I need to make sure I don't make any errors doing this. So I'm actually going to write out those numbers, add them up using the column method, and then make sure I can actually see exactly what I'm doing and get the correct answer. So I'm going to do 12 plus 24 plus 24 plus 72 plus 24. So 6, 10, 12, 16, carry 1, 3, 5, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so my final answer is going to be 156 over 336. This is a particularly challenging question, right? There's a lot of maths in it. There's a lot of tricky parts in it, right? You need to make sure you take your time as you're going through it, right? Look at the whole solution. Think about it. It is one that's worth four marks, which does seem like not a lot, but if you're aiming for the top grade, you should be able to do this, and you need to be able to get four marks in it.